In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So it's with great joy that we gather again on this 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you're visiting us here in the cathedral, then a particular welcome um, here today. Brothers and sisters, as we gather around the altar of God, we come to the one who loves us completely and out of his love shares his mercy and his forgiveness with us. So for those times that we've turned away from the Lord, let us turn back to him now, trusting in his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You have seduced me, Lord, and I have let myself be seduced. You have overpowered me. You were the stronger. I am a daily laughing stock, everybody's but. Each time I speak the word, I have to howl and proclaim violence and ruin. The word of the Lord has meant for me insult, derision all day long. I used to say, I will not think about him. I will not speak in his name anymore. Then there seemed to be a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. The effort to restrain it wearied me. I could not bear it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, and worship him. I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings, by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behavior of the world around you, but let your behavior change, modeled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and know what is good, what it is that God wants, and what is the perfect thing to do. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path, because the way you think is not God's, not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. 
But anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what has a man to offer in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And when he does, he'll reward each one according to his behavior. The Gospel of the Lord. Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my way. It's quite a change of tone that Jesus has for Peter in this week's Gospel compared to what he was saying in last week's Gospel. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. But a bit like a soap opera, we've had a week to wait between these two episodes. But in reality, as experienced by the disciples and by Jesus himself, there's not even five minutes in between these two statements. You are Peter, get behind me, Satan. And there's a beautiful, beautiful symmetry between these two statements. You are Peter, Peter meaning rock. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. It is not the flesh and blood of man that have revealed these things to you, but my Father in heaven. A few moments later, you are Satan. You are an obstacle in my way. Satan as a word literally meaning something thrown across a path, an obstacle. The way you think is not God's way, but man's way. So where do we stand with Peter in between these two statements? and these two realities of what the Lord is saying. If we are to try to follow and emulate the lives of the saints as they seek to follow Christ, what does Jesus' words mean for us. So we are all having been given, having given our um, profession of faith, having confessed what we believe to be true in the person of Christ. Like Peter, we are entrusted with a mission, with a particular task. Like Peter, not in the same way as Peter, um, but in, in like Peter, we are all called to be places where the mystical body of Christ can be founded in our lives, in our homes, 
in our places of work, because of our Christian faith, the church can be planted, the church can be secure. But what we need to watch out for is the fact that as we make these places where the church through our Christian faith is made present, that it is the Christian faith that is present. That we don't veer off from this to something else. Jesus gets annoyed with Peter to the point of calling him Satan, to calling him an obstacle in his path. Why? What is it, what is it that is so awful that Peter is doing? Has he done something heinous? Well, on the face of it, no. If we look at the face value, Peter has heard Jesus say, look, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and they're going to murder me. They're going to put me to, the, to death. And Peter says, well, is there a way of avoiding that? It kind of seems like the friendly thing to throw into the mix, into the conversation. Does this have to happen? But of course, the cross, the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ is so central to Jesus's mission. It is so central to our lives as Christians too, that anything that masks that reality is an obstacle to the truth. And we need to be careful not to allow our good wishes, our kind thoughts, our image as, of Jesus as some lovely guy to get in the way of the truth of the Christian life. Lots of us will try to encourage those around us to take serious the Christian life. We'll tell them about the good things of what it is to be a Christian. And by God, it is a glorious life as a Christian and as a Catholic. And we should love it. And we should be pleased to tell others about it. But we ignore the cross at our peril. We ignore the cross and we miss the point. Because if we don't know from the beginning that suffering alongside the Lord is at the heart of our Christian faith, then we are going to get lost and we are going to go missing. We're going to get confused. Because it's only by looking to that image that was once an object of Roman torture and execution and seeing through the person of Jesus Christ, through the actions of his passion and his death to his resurrection, that suffering and death becomes life resurrection and glory so as we come as we're fed by the lord in the scriptures in the breaking of bread here at today's mass we are given the confidence to follow in that tradition of the apostles of the saints in being places where our christian faith allows the church to be present. But that church, that Christian church, is marked by the sign of the cross. 
the cross of suffering, but the cross that because of the resurrection becomes glorious.
Gathered by God's command to seek new ways to discover his will in our lives, we turn to him in prayer. For the church, that the Spirit of God will make her a prophetic voice in the world, upholding gospel values. Lord, in your mercy. For the world and all its peoples, that richer nations will avoid self-interest and learn to share their wealth with the poor. Lord, in your mercy. For all who are held captive or are unjustly imprisoned, that their hope may remain strong and their freedom soon be secured. Lord, in your mercy. For all Christians, that we will be strengthened in our commitment to deny ourselves, take up our crosses and live lives of true discipleship. Lord, in your mercy. For the sick and the suffering, the elderly and infirm, the anxious, the fearful, and those who are alone, that they will experience the infinite love of God. Lord, in your mercy. In this week, when we celebrate the birthday of our Blessed Lady, we turn to her to ask for her motherly help and intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Gracious God, we ask you to hear our prayers and grant that we may draw closer to you each day. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and for e forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, for the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of, our, of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gregory and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Malcolm, our Bishop, Thomas, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am told that you should enter into my room, that I may say the thing that my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbour. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So you'll have seen on the front page of the cathedral record reference to the priests in concert you will be pleased to know that that's not us priests here in the cathedral. They, these are actual priests who can sing. I know I said in my homily that suffering is a part of a Christian life, but I don't quite mean that much. Talking of priests, um, Paul is um, now going to start, um, is going away this week. Um, for his second or first, depending on how, how you count it, year at seminary, um, he's going to Allen Hall, so our prayers go with him. Um, he needs them. Not just him, all of the seminarians need them, okay? It's, it's a tough slog, but it's mighty worthwhile. So um, good luck and be assured of our prayers, Paul. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen. 